I guess that worked. So engineering test mode, use up, down to scroll screens, up. That's just different e A to D ports. Not super helpful about knowing what all this means. Let's switch back to port eight. It's, uh, it's a lot of ports. A lot of analog digital conversion going on somewhere. Last chime sounded 11 sounded to zero. Okay, dimming step. Dim display. <laughs> Sense in O. Fuel count zero fuel. Zero counts. Trichodometers. Okay. Odometer zero count. Battery A to D counts 550. This is a bit. So I guess it's on a scale of whatever the bit depth is for the analog to digital converter and then how it scales to whatever, which is whatever mapping. Oh, here, it tells you the battery voltage. So battery A to D counts, battery voltage, 15 volts. Obviously that's a low voltage battery. Fail safe cooling mode, not, I'm assuming it's never gone into fail safe cooling mode. That's good. Temp gauge. Cool temps at seven Celsius. Fuel number of samples on off SC. Don't know what that means. Fuel on, fuel off. Instant distance to empty. Displayed distance to empty. Interesting. What else we got? Oops, the wrong direction. Bad miles. to adjust. No, oh, it's okay. I'll leave that alone. Since this is a world car, that's a Kuga. It makes sense that it's defaulting to kilometers per liter and then liters per hundred kilometers. Oh, now it's showing raw average fuel economy 21.6. It's way lower than what this actually gets. Maybe that's just instant. The fuel gauge. Fuel filter hysteresis percent status. Fuel filter, fuel filter. Jeez, there's a lot of stuff. Fuel level. Hmm. Like float and then also the ADD input tachometer. Dot, and it's not running. Speedometer. We're not going anywhere, so. These look like just mappings. Memory maps. Configuration. I thought I would just see the high voltage battery. That's what I was looking for here. It's like high voltage stuff, which might be. Oh, here we go. ATM, all TT and fixed, all TT and fixed location RTT on and color test. So now all the warning indicators are on. Ones that this car does have and doesn't have. That's interesting. There's like a little wind thing and ET. I don't know what that means. Those are not things, those are not indicators this car has. Interesting. Gauge test. Oh, is this going to do a sweep of the gauges? Oh my goodness. That's hilarious. <laughs> They're not analog gauges, but it's doing a gauge test, but it doesn't sweep the power that's strange. Oh, I think we're back now to the beginning. Yeah, I think we're back to the beginning. So no, I was looking for high voltage battery stuff. Bummer. Nothing pertaining to the high voltage battery here. Do that one more time, because that's fun. 160. Okay, here's how you get a 2020 Ford Escape into the engineering test mode. If it has a digital instrumentation cluster. And the same also applies for the Lincoln Corsair, the Ford Maverick, I believe even the Mustang Mach-E.
as well as probably the Ford Cougar itself, if it's equipped with this type of an instrumentation cluster. Once you get in the car, if the display comes on or it shows you the animation, you need to wait until the display goes totally off. So we're just gonna sit here, parking light's gone off, the display's gone off. If it's on, it won't work. At once you get to that point, it's basically the same as all everything else that you see online. You just press and hold the OK button, the display is back on again. So got to make sure that the display is completely off. Okay, pressing and holding the OK button for five seconds. I'm just going to go right up to there. One, two, three, four, five. Put on the brake, press to start. Keep holding down the OK button. You'll see ready to drive. Strange, it didn't work. It didn't work this time. Hmm. Turn the car back off. It didn't work the first time for me, so the second time that I was like, oh. <laughs> so display is still on, the dashboard is still on. It is now turned off. I think we might even wait for this to turn off. Yeah, I think we're going to wait for that to turn off, too. I feel like once I, there it goes, it's turning off. Showing the Ford logo as it goes to sleep. And then I think this will come back on again for a second and show the gear position selections. And perhaps that's when it's totally asleep. There it is. And it'll go off again. I see the selector lights up appeared in the center console. Here we go. Let's try this again. Pressing the OK button, five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Starting the car. So that's foot on the brake and pressing the engine start button. Releasing that. I may have held the button down too long because it said engineering mode and then it didn't went away. Oh my goodness. Let's try that one more time. Get a little air in here. Woo. You can see that it works. You just need to release the OK button. Otherwise, it will come out of engineering mode if you just keep holding on the OK button. OK. Last time. The main display will go off. There it goes. The sync display needs to go off. There it goes. Now we'll come back to the main display, main instrumentation cluster, the center console parking selector. The parking selector will light up and then the main instrumentation cluster will light up with the gear selection as well. So I'll, I'll try to show both of those once we see them. Come on. I put the windows down, so maybe it's not gonna do it this time. Well, this is taking longer. I did this twice in a row and it showed the, the parking selector on the display, the gear position selections, and then it also the park LED illuminated. Yeah, weird, it didn't do it this time. We've waited a really long time. Everything seems like it actually is off. So we're gonna try it one more time. Here we go. Pressing the OK button for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Now I'll put my foot on the brake, start the car. And as soon as that engineering display appears, release the button. Released, and there we go. Now we're in the engineering test mode. We can scroll through like we were before. So cool, pretty neat. A little strange on an all digital dashboard. I don't know why cycling through the gauges is necessary, but it's cool that it's there. I don't know if I can drive the car. It doesn't feel like I can drive the car, but you can't see the gear selection because they're, they're all illuminated. If I leave the engineering test mode, I think I just press and hold the OK button down for five seconds, it'll probably leave, there it goes. See, now it's showing that it's in park and everything else is gray. And if I go into drive, it will show that information. My guess is that this mode is really geared for internal combustion engine cars. It's not designed to provide any information regarding hybrid or electric vehicles. That maybe there's no diagnostic menu for that. But anyways, that's how you do it on a 2020 Ford Escape hybrid with this digital dash. Hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.